we got the PMP going down, PMP knives, PMP knives. And uh, look at that, check it out. All kinds of stuff in here. Uh, nice case, but what is this? This is the PMP Revenge 2. Revenge, they made a revenge. Now they're making a revenge part two, okay? Part two, and lanyard hole. Ooh, are those number eights? Are we getting all fancy? Oh, hell yeah, we all uptown. Um, M390. Mine, these are numbered, by the way, and mine is uh, number one. Number one? Uh, how did I get that? I mean, that was just, I never asked for a low number or anything. I just ordered the knife. So, how, how about dumb luck? That's really cool. Got a lot of machining crossed here. Uh, so it's it's definitely more grippy than if it didn't have machining. See what I'm saying? And this one's made by, I mean, you know, I think PMP, all their stuff uh, of the folding knives has been made by Max Ace. So that's a good thing. This is a frame lock. It's got a hardened steel insert in the lock bar and it's, that's 40%, isn't it? Um, easy to disengage. You got some jimping in here and the pass through is, and then the flipper tab hits you on the thumb and says, get the hell out of the way. And it just drops. One thing for sure, the detent in this knife is not overwhelming. And this is the only, in fact, Stay out of grandma's greasy fried chicken, and you can do that. You can just flick it just with no more than the friction of your finger on that blade. That's how light that detent is. Like that. Wow. And, well, and that's another opening method, by the way. Usually, I think, if the only way you're going to open a knife is flipper tab, then they could have a stronger detent. Uh, but this one is not. So is that something to bitch about or is that something that makes it even more fun to do? I don't know. I think it depends on the individual. The flipper tab is definitely muted, isn't it? It's small. Uh, it's jimped. And you know what? They bead blasted their way into infinity on this thing. So all these surfaces are really smooth and silky, you know? I mean, it really is nicely done. What's got on the inside? Oh, yeah, okay, that backspacer. They they gave it some moving and grooving. Oh, and they pocketed the scales. We will take this apart, by the way. And how much does it weigh? This is interesting here, though, isn't it? Backspacer coming up. Put it on the scale. Ooh, baby. Yikes, 6.4 ounces. Well, I mean, they've made some monsters in the past that were whew, insane, okay? Uh, and I just went by uh, grams, okay. 183 grams, yeah. This is not a lightweight. It's not a small knife, though. It's a pretty good-sized knife. Uh, close to 4-inch blade. Down here it is, cutting edge is three and three quarter inches, which is 96 millimeters. There's four, closest point, three and three quarter. Uh, so, I mean, longest could be close to like 101, 102 millimeters and overall length, eight and three quarter inches at almost 22 and a half centimeters. So she's a, she's a big girl. She's a big girl. Hold on, let me put this on here. What you think? 12.6, eh, only, what? That just doesn't seem right. Okay, but it does, it's just a half inch, huh? Let's do this. Yeah, same, okay. What's the blade stock? Mm, 0.12, 3.2 millimeters. Wow, that's amazing. You would think that blade stock is thicker than that. Oh, speaking of blade. Okay, um, initial impression of 
sharpness yeah it's sharp it's it's really sharp that's that's good but yeah easy to disengage drops yeah i mean maybe a little guillotine-ish for you it just follows you around like that uh jumping up here no real go forward position but you got a little choil here should be nice for sharpening purposes I, I, you know, I struggle to think. I mean, this is a very simple design. I, I kept thinking, what if he would have put a fuller in here? Or maybe played differently, changed the blade shape, maybe made a taller flat grind and then just did a swedge down to the tip uh, or something. Because it just seems, this blade just seems plain, doesn't it? It seems plain. Um... White Mountain Knives, um, 260 bucks, and, oh, 10% discount, LTK, use that as your discount code, so it'll give you $26 off, you know, and they're not charging tax and shipping right now that I'm aware of, and overall, yeah, you can see, and here's some additional information, drop point, Carlo Maria Massa, and of course, manufactured by Max Ace, only 260 produced. And so that means maybe that the blue model may have only been like 100 or 110, because mine's one of 150. That's interesting. So yeah, mine's, pl I mean, this is, it's not colored and blue would be nice except for the fact that you can do whatever you want with this. It's just one big blank canvas. So you can send it to whoever and have them put whatever kind of finish on it you want. So it's kind of primed for being pimped, you know, modded out. And those are number eights all the way around. Interesting. Might have been cool if he would have put the screw from underneath then you wouldn't have seen this screw at all. That a little cleaner look. Um, I don't know, maybe put a locator pin on the inside here and not even have this screw here, you know? Or do that way here, I've seen it done, you know what I mean? So you don't have the screw showing or you could have put the screws through from the back and had this completely clean Although, you know, it's such a blank canvas anyhow. Ergos are good, and it's got a big old long luxurious handle on it, so that's not a problem. Yeah, reverse grip is nice. It's, yeah, it's, I mean, it's not real thick, actually, but it's kind of tall here. It fills your hand up. Blade to handle length. Oh, baby. And okay, we got it all there. Ooh, no, I can't quite touch that tip, but it's close. Design flow's great. Design flow's good. And where's my balance point on this? Okay, right there. Wow. Whew. But I think you can back up pretty far and still have that flipper tab hit you on the thumb so you can get out of the way. So this is ultra fidget friendly. There's no doubt about that. And what's really strange is that flipper tab is nothing yet. Look at down here. I mean, when that comes back, there's a lot of flipper tabs that are gonna be past you, past your thumb. I mean, that, I mean, and the blade will come around, get you, but this one, it's strange how long it is down here and how short it is on top. So it gives it a pretty clean look when it's closed. Strange, but it still gives you that kind of area to guard to keep your fingers from going up on the blade. Looks proportional. Time for the dirt rag and guess what? Not going in from the front, there's the logo. Oh, I never did show you the rest of this. Well, there wasn't much. I mean, it's an interesting pouch though. He does those for sure. Um, here's this, very uh, 
interesting. And yeah, nice. Nice touch. Uh, I like the pouch a lot. You know, that that's nice looking. Okay, let's get this thing apart. Let's see if we can. Yeah, easy. That broke loose. Real nice. Pretty clean. And yes, we got a flat spot on the pivot. So, and that's important when you don't have anything on the front to go in and stabilize um, that. So, boom. Uh, this is coming apart like a like a finely tuned machine, isn't it? Wow, this is this is pretty impressive, actually. I know the design itself is not like overly um, complicated or engaging, but wow, that that just whew, that pops apart. Let me. I'm not sure that this has to come off, but. It might, and so we'll find out really soon here. No, it didn't have to come off. And there's the inside where the screw comes through from the pocket clip. And yes, it's pocketed for weight relieving. I mean, just think what it might weigh had they not done that. Wow. Um, and yeah, that's kind of that heavy lube stuff i'm not big on that but look multi-row bearings okay that explains that crazy good drop doesn't it wow and it gives a lot of support to the blade too because it's a wider ring and they're captured so don't have to worry about them falling out thank god for small favors otherwise you know pretty clean and on this side dump you out of here. Ooh, well, that thick lube's gonna make it tough. It wants to stay in there. We'll clean that out. And then, okay, just the tail end is squared off. Okay, so that means it passes all the way through. Ah, and the back side has the little squared off area. Okay. Okay, that works. Nothing like a little WD-40 on a towel to purge these things out i don't know if i should be using that or not but i don't think it's going to hurt anything that looks good it smells wonderful nothing like wd-40 in the morning it smells like victory okay look at how thick this sucker is come here get over here oh that's almost four millimeter 0.15, yeah, that's a thick old dog, isn't it? That's a thick as a brick. Come here. Because we're going to build you back this way. Build back better, yes, we will. And, uh, okay, so we got that all done. Nice and clean and shiny and squared off part goes up. So is that going to make it? Yeah, that's going to make that logo correct. Ah, put the bearings in. Let's do that. Drop there. About a quart and a half of crazy lube. And then kick this down. Bearings. It's like making a sandwich. And I think we're gonna throw these on top. Now the thing is I wanna make sure my pivot is in the right position because when I throw this dog on here, huh, those standoffs are sturdy. Okay, we got it. Click, yeah, it's, this hardware is uh, really nice. And we got it jacked down. Let's put these in here. And I think they're all the exact same size. So that's not a problem. The hardware is nice looking too, isn't it? It's got that machined look. It's 
you know, nice and flat and good looking. Uh, yeah, solid. I'm going to say, what does it remind me of? Kind of like a Riot knife. You know, those are built like a tank. That kind of thing. That's what it reminds me of. But Max Ace makes some knives that are, yeah, that are real solid. Okay, so we're done and we're centered right up. No problem at all. Let's see what we got. Yeah, just walks around again. Really no change in the action from that, but uh, I just don't like that thick goopy stuff in there. So now I got my thin ungoopy stuff in there. Yeah. All right, we're good. Got any blade player lock rock? Nope. That's a solid lock up too. PMP Revenge too. It's solid. It, you know, um, what's your net? Like two and a quarter on this? You know, this is as solid and tank-like, and uh, the hardware feels solid. Multi-row bearings. This is as, you know, this is, as far as the build quality and the fit and finish goes, it's, it's as good as anything. Uh, that I've had my hands on, I, you know, there's nothing wrong with this. This is just going to be a decision based on, is it too heavy? Is it too long? Uh, is it a design that you feel attracted to? That kind of thing. So, and, and they didn't make a lot of them, so they didn't, you know, put all in on it. But, uh, yeah, I like the Revenge when it first came out, the first one, and then this Revenge too. Yeah, it caught my eye because I like the flow of the lines on this. Of course, I'm no uh, no one that uh, detests large knives. I like large knives, so this is in that family. And weight, five and a half, six and a half, doesn't bother me. I think when it starts getting closer to seven and a half and eight, it gets a little ridiculous. But this is this is within spec as far as a carry for me. Yeah. All right. I'm going to let you go. PMP Revenge 2. And you know what we do. We love them knives. So you guys stay sharp.